Welcome back to the AT&T cybersecurity video series. My name is Shira Rubinov, and I'm here with Jason Inskip, director of the 5G Center of Excellence. Jason, welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me again. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure. So this segment will cover how 5G fits into a broader strategy of connectivity for businesses, as well as explaining the different types of 5G and how they work with other technology to keep businesses connected. So Jason, when AT&T Business talks about 5G, you tend to put it in the context of overall business connectivity and not as a standalone technology. Can you please explain that broader idea of connectivity and how 5G fits into it? Yeah, it's interesting. When we started looking at 5G, it was four years ago now, we we're thinking about this morning, and and you start seeing things like, hey, I need better latency, I need these better things. And you see our, you know, our commercials, every operator's commercial, right? We, we talk heavily about network performance. And I stress the word network, right? But the applications have become hungry, right? They, they, don't, they need more than just network predictability and performance. They need end-to-end -end performance. And as we saw those you know, different you know, AR, VR, drones, whatever the, the hot topic was, if I don't have predictability from origin to destination and back, the experiences are going to be tough to get to, right? So as we think and thought about how we get there, it's this, you know, I think an equation we had a long time, we kind of put away in, in a sense was latency plus reliability equals optimal experience, right? Interesting, yes. And that's from end to end, mm -hmm. right? So we've got to think, and I mentioned in our last call, you know, talking about convergence, mm -hmm. right? And how the networks all come together. So it's very important that we work across the paradigm. At the same time, the better we can do that in terms of making the hip bone connect to the knee bone the same way, right? It makes it easier for the application providers, right? As they start thinking about, and, and you know, one recent example that's you know, very front of mind to me is you know, FirstNet and the Z axis, right? And being able to not only see where a person is in 2D, but now I can add vertical. Right. And, and that's big when you think about first net, finding people on top on, on floor. So sure. now as a developer, you know how the network works and now your application can play into that. Init initially, just be inside by side. As we continue to move forward, the two start to work together better. So, again, that's where we're trying to think about it and get beyond just traditional mindsets of, of cellular. Right. Sure. Yes. And a new converged construct focused on the user. Of course. Well, that, that makes the total sense focusing on the user. And of course, 5G isn't one discrete product. There are different implementations of the technology. So Jason, can you explain these different options and where they fit into connectivity strategy? Uh, yeah. I mean, it, there's, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. At the end of the day, it, it's still a network, right? So that's the, the main thing. There's a lot of different pieces. So the first thing is traditional. Those things remain the same. you got rate plans, smartphones, those kind of things that are there. Yeah. Then you've got how that, you know, interfaces with the IoT side, right? So that's a, a growing field, but how they use that's different. So those things are traditional. They're not, they're not, they're not going away. The, the pricing models may shift a little bit, but they're not going away. The second thing that really starts getting interesting is new spectrum options. So, you know, mm -hmm. for us, millimeter wave or 5G plus, sub six, getting the, the spectrum that we always know, that creates different opportunities. Some really exciting things begin to, from a you know, pure, from us perspective, are things like we used to have a solution, or we still have a solution called AT&T Fast Track. Mm -hmm. And that basically gives you better priority, better, you know, on the network as it is. Well, take that and, and upgrade that to network slicing. So now I can create these HOV lanes of sorts that no one else can drive in but my traffic, right? That creates a whole new set of opportunity, not just from a pure product perspective, but also when you think about these campus environments or even macro environments, potentially SLAs, right? That, that create opportunities for our customers. Next step beyond that, the edge, right? Uh, you can spin that so many different ways in terms of private cellular networks now coming up with CBRS, license spectrum, our version of MEC, right? You got that. And, and now, you know, take that another level, which is probably see some things around APIs. And then near and dear to you, I know, is the security side, right? We've got a whole new sassy type of thing we've got to figure out, right, oh. where the networks converge. And uh, it's yep. exciting. It's exciting. Exactly. And you just touched upon one of my favorite topics, cybersecurity. So we can't talk about 5G or connectivity without talking about security. 
So what layers of cybersecurity should go into a business connectivity strategy? And I'm interested to hear your perspective on this. Oh, I just got off the phone with some folks on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's interesting because I try to lay out where, I, where I've seen the opportunity, where I see the opportunity, right? And, and again, I, you'll hear me beat the drum on this quite a bit is if you don't know what cellular is, right, both operator driven and new opportunity, it's hard to think about what can I offer in late LTE or 5G to enhance the inherent security that's already there, right? Because there's a lot of it already there. Right. Mm -hmm. But our customers need to know that our internal teams need to understand that. And then there's new opportunity. Let's call them landmarks, as I think about it, where it, network A connects to network B. You Note, know, I don't say 5G. I don't say other side. But those edge opportunities are coming up hard and fast in terms of how do I hand traffic off? How do I share the traffic across? How, how does it look today versus tomorrow? And, and again, that virtual DMZ sassy type concept, we've been thinking about it for a while, but that's a, just a su super opportunity. The questions that come, though, are, at least in my head, is where do I put it, right? There's a one logic that says put it in between us and the cloud. There's another logic that says put it in line. There's a you know, bunch of different logics there that we've got to figure out. I think the constructs on what will be valuable are, are starting to surface. Um, but again, we, we've got to get those areas aggregated first. And, and, and that's the piece that's jumping out. The device side stuff, we're pretty solid there on the device side. Overall network packet stuff, yeah, at t we do a great job of that. But there's a new opportunity for our customers as well. Certainly. And I can't help but point to a couple of things you said earlier about being end-to-end -end in security. You talk about end-to-end -end security. You were talking heavily about the process and the technology and the people. That's what AT&T talks about all the time. And certainly in the security space, we talk about the people, the process, and the technology. And it's very interesting how that segues together into 5G and how important mm -hmm. of it. So thank you very much for your share. And I look forward to talking to you again real soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.